Hello everyone. Welcome to Drum Roll Please, Drama Free Friday and How to Get Creative.com show. I hope you all are having a wonderful, wonderful week so far. And we'll wrap it up with a fun day on Friday here at the uh, How to Get Creative.com Drama Free Friday show. And you may hear some voices in the background, and that's because we have some special guests coming on. Um, yeah, so I'm Barb Owen, and I'm so glad to have you join me today. Hi, Deborah. Hello, Braddy Patty. <laughs> Hi, Judith. Uh, oh, Judith is shoveling the drama out the door. Well, good. Good. No, drama is never welcome on Drama Free Friday. No, it's not. Hi, Rosie. Hi, Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Good to have you here. So today we're going to do some do something special. And so I'll be introducing my guests. Actually, there are two guests coming. And now, I know one for sure. There might be two. You just never know. Um... So anyway, hi Linda McAllister. Hi Lisa. <laughs> Nancy's alarm went off on time. Yes, it did. <laughs> Hello, Josie and Sylvia. It's good to see everybody. Hi, Vicky. Everybody's coming in, getting settled. Hello, Kathy. Yeah, I was I was intending to have a guest um, in the studio with me, live in the studio with me today. And that didn't work out because, unfortunately, he had a family emergency, and so he wasn't able to join me today. But we were able to do a switch with the guest I was planning to have next week. And so, yeah, so we'll just reschedule. I'll reschedule Ian for a future time. So it's going to be a lot of fun. I think you guys are really going to enjoy this this. Um, special guest today. She has a lot of things to talk to you about and show you that are a little different from some of the things that we normally do here. Well, a lot different than what we normally do here. But I think that creativity is creativity wherever you find it. And I think we can, no matter who we are and what kind of creative expression we have, um, we can use other people's creativity to maybe give us a boost to, you know, inspire us to maybe take a little idea from someone else and it just takes you off in a whole new direction with your own creativity, which is really a, a cool way to to enjoy other people's creativity, even if it's not your exact um, expression of interest, let's say. And yes, I forgot to do something on my computer here. So let's see. Can I still do that? Let me see here. Here we go. I forgot to, of all the things I set, I forgot one thing. <laughs> yes, yes, I did. Okay. Um, Let's see who else is here. Um, hey, Steven. Angel. Angel is Orla, right? Yeah, I'm sure that's Orla. Steven, Deborah, hey Debbie, Rosie, Barbara. <laughs> Linda's phone warned her that Barb's online. Oh, that's a little scary. Oh, thanks, Kathy. Kathy likes my colorful shirt. Hi, Lorraine. Lorraine says, Happy St. Patty's Day. Yes, yes, I do have green on, by the way, just for you guys. So nobody can come over here and pinch me. Hi, Janice. Um, <laughs> Lorraine likes the picture of the sponsors. Yeah, did you guys, if you followed me on Twitter, you got to see the picture of the sponsors. They were being best friends. That was such a cute picture. I had to use it. I had to use it. Actually, they just commandeer my Twitter account. Let's be honest. They just take it over on Fridays. The animals are in revolt on Friday. Hi, Ina. Um, let's see. <laughs> Dee Dee's in one ear and I'm in the other. <laughs> Uh-oh. 
Race is in the house. Watch out. Hi, Dorothy. Hi, Allie. Pauline. Um, hi, Carla and Cindy. Hi, Dasha. Uh oh, looks like Clausman is in the house too. You can watch out. Watch out. You got you got the the clan is here. <laughs> the clan is here. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Jane. It's great to have you guys here. So I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna talk for a second here. And then we're just gonna go straight into our um time with our guest because I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. I think you're gonna enjoy this. So let's see what's gone on this week. Uh, we've gone, this this weather where I live, which is in the Midwest of the United States, has gone from 29, it's ranged from 29 to uh, in the 50s, all in one week. It is just crazy, crazy weather here. So you don't know whether, when you get up in the morning, you don't know whether you should put on a turtleneck or a tank top. I mean, it's just one of those. It's It's crazy. Um, what else? I did some, we did some recording this week. We recorded a couple more what is videos with Claus Man, so you'll get to see some other things that he did. And so those are going to be upcoming what is videos on YouTube. And this week, I had the YouTube videos that went up were about colored pencils, and I can't remember the other one. <laughs> That's sad because I put it up myself. But anyway, I don't remember the other one. Um, yeah, so that's what happens when you have a lot of stuff that goes on during the week. You, I do what has to be done, and then I forget. <laughs> it's like, whoop, done, check, off the list, moving on. And those of you that are on uh, members at howtogetcreative.com, I put up a really nice long bonus class for you yesterday. So you're going to get to just be with me in the studio and just watch me create. And so I put a nice long, I mean, it is like over two hours. So it's a lot of barb, but it's, uh, I thought it would be fun for you to see a really totally unscripted class and just a creative process video. So that's up for all of the members over at howtogetcreative.com. So don't forget that if you want to join the membership, if you want to just take a look around, you can join it for a dollar for the month, for one entire month. You get access to everything in the site except the VIP uh, section. And then there's also a monthly membership, and then there's a VIP membership. So anyway, if you want to check us out, you're welcome to do that. We'd love to have you. Um, Let's see. Nancy says the new bonus class was awesome. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed that. Just scrolling back to say hello to everybody. Um, hi, Jody. Hi, Marion. Hello, Stacy. Nice to have you here. Oh, the colored pencil one made Judith drool. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> hello, Bella. Okay. Hey, Jan. Oh, the other one was water brushes. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> I knew you guys would, would tell me. Yes, the other one was on water brushes. Uh, Dorothy says she couldn't get, what, you couldn't get the bonus class to run? Hmm. Try it again later and see. Hi, hi Josie Card Chick. Try it again. Hi, Krissa. Because um, <laughs> it should be okay for you. There might have just been a little hitch somewhere in the in the ether in the ether webs. You know the internet. You know how they do. Hello, Stardust Girl. Okay, so um, anyone that comes in after I have said this, I hope that you are Hi Maj. I hope that's how you say your name from Sweden. I'm glad you're here in Farah Crafts. Um Hey Travis, good to have you here. So anyone who comes in Please know that you're welcome, those of you in the chat, if you want to continue to kind of make them the new chatters feel welcome, that would be excellent. If you would like to give the um, the live presentation a thumbs up, that would be great. And you can share it with your friends or whatever, that would be super too. And those of you watching the recording, thank you so much for taking your time to be here and watch the recording. 
Okay, so we are going to just chat for a second about my special guest that we have coming on. She is uh, someone that I met several years ago when I was in California, and she is a phenomenal designer, and she is a costume designer. Now, people who do costume designing also use sketchbooks and color and many of the kinds of things that a lot of mixed media artists use as well. And so I thought that it would be a lot of fun for you guys to get to see, learn about her process and see some of the things that that she does, uh, finished work as well as kind of process. And, um, And then you'll get to ask her some questions as well. So what she, I'm not sure she'll be seeing the chat, so you'll need to put your questions in in caps and in the chat, and then I'll re- relay the questions to her, and then we'll, we'll chat about, um, about anything that you would like to ask questions about. And so, hello. so hey, Jamie, I just saw you pop in there. And let's see, what else? Oh, and there's also someone else over in her uh, creative space with her, and his name is the technical department. So I don't know whether he'll be on camera or not, but he's behind the scenes in California too. So anyway, I just thought I would introduce you to someone very special to me and to our family and to our creative universe and a big contributor to the world of costume design and her name is Rosalita Medina. I know her as Rosa. So let me just switch over here and we'll see if I can do the technical switch-o change-o and there she is. (laughs) Hello Rosa. Hello, Barb. So, so very happy and grateful to see you. Oh, it's so nice to have you there. Who's who's sitting there by you? It's technical support, Grace, <laughs> and my uh, um, almost uh, oldest friend uh, here in America in the past 20 years. We've known mm-hmm. each other for 18, I believe. Yeah, that's great. 18 years? Oh, my goodness. 18, yes. Yeah. So who is our... Who is our other special guest that we have down here in the in the <laughs> on the screen? Who's that? Uh, it's the iPad, so it's just showing off. <laughs> okay. It's the love bug. It's Everybody a... needs the love bug. Well, everyone needs a love bug. Yes, we do. <laughs> oh, there we have we have race and we have race and we have love bug and we have Rosa. So, okay. What I want to, uh, I'm just going to jump in, and those of you that are in the chat, I'll be watching the chat. Um, Judith says you can't hear her. Can you guys hear her? Let's take just a second. Are you guys, somebody else? Can you hear me? Hello, everybody. Okay, let me know if you heard her say hello. No sound from California, Judith says. And somebody else is saying Rosa, so just a minute. Yes, we can hear. Okay. Okay, so we have some people that can hear. Judith, I don't know why you can't hear, so um, you might... Speak up a little louder. Yeah, speak a little bit louder. Okay, and Judith, if you can't hear, I will have to say you might have to um, watch the recording, unfortunately, because I know we've had that. Let's try something here. Hold on a second. Yeah, everybody else is hearing. It's just Judith, but she is uh, located in another country. I don't know if that makes a difference. So... Allie is in Australia. Welcome, Allie. My goodness. Allie says, hi, Can Rosa. Better? Can you hear any better? Um, it was it was a little better the other way, I think. All right, we're trying one more thing. Can you hear? I can hear you, but you're a little soft. All right. Is this a little, any better? Yeah, that's good. Okay, hold on. Okay. Can you... Put Rosa in the spotlight. Okay, just a second. Rosa is in the spotlight. Hello, Ruth. Good to see you. Okay. All right, so here's what we're doing. Oh. Whoa, that won't work. Hold on. Okay. We're, we're just making some technical adjustments, folks. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. Hold your earbuds. 
Just a minute. So while we're waiting to kind of uh, deal with the sound, notice those incredible costumes in the background. You'll get some close-up looks at those in a little bit, you guys. But aren't they cool? Yep, the ones for your iPhone. Oh, yeah, in your car. That's right. You can use these. So we're just. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I agree with you, Lorraine. <laughs> All right, how's this? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Is this better? Can you hear me from this little microphone? I can hear you from there. Can you guys hear him okay? Okay. Here you go, okay. Right here. Thank you. Right here. Left ear. <laughs> I forget where my left ear is. <laughs> There you go. Now everybody can hear me well. That's good. Very good. Two Welcome. thumbs up. Good. Okay, so we are just going to just jump right into the questions, Miss Rosa. Yes. So first of all, I mean, the all important question, the important question would be um, exactly, exactly how did you meet the technical department, also known as race? How did you meet him? I moved to oh, maybe let me, I moved to North Carolina <laughs> in Wilmington, Wilmington, North Carolina in the East Coast. Uh -huh. And uh, I think in 1999 or 98, uh, on the summer, I met Res in a play. He was uh, one of the cast. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, costume designing uh, a Brian Putman musical, I believe called the mannequin um, and we uh, pretty much right away realized we had the same humor, uh, the love for movies um, and a friendship sparked right there and we continued after the play uh, seeing uh, each other and working together. Mm -hmm. um, I helped him for a lot of photos. Uh, he needed some headshots, funny mm -hmm funky and a little out of the box and uh so we did a wonderful series with a photographer and so you were helping to uh, do some styling then that's correct okay all right now i can tell that you have a uh, an accent that is not native to the states so would you tell us a little bit about where you're from and how long you've been here and so forth yes uh, I just have to talk to uh, the uh, technical support. I hear echoes. It's normal? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It is what it is. All right. <laughs> um, I was born in the French Alps um, from a French and an American father, <laughs> French mom. And I uh, decided in 96 to uh, come and live with him and... Uh, uh, discover my other half. Um, so he lived in North Carolina at that time. So I went and met him, and I've been here. I've been for twenty years. It's been twenty years now. And it's really loud. I'm so sorry. That's all right. <laughs> I, I hear myself really, really loud. Testing one two. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, oh, they probably can't hear, so I'll wait a minute. I can hear you. Okay. So, Nancy says to Rosa, you have a gorgeous accent. Trying to figure out how to get rid of the, uh, Echo. the echoing. Okay. You guys have to know that there's just a whole lot of technical stuff that goes on behind the scenes. While you guys do that, how about if I show Rosa's website to everybody? Try how about that? Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You can hear me fine? Yes. I can okay. hear you fine. Here you go. Okay, hold on a second. Just a second. Will it work? Good enough. Thank goodness for the technical department. That's true. <laughs> okay. 
Voila. Okay, is that better? Is that Much a little better? better. Okay. <laughs> Technically <laughs> approved. Yay, good. So yeah, um, so I'm uh, I'm a freaking I'm French and half you, Puerto Rican. Oh, you're right. <laughs> That's another side of uh, my DNA. <laughs> so Re- so Rosa is freaking. She's Puerto Rican and French. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Um so you've been here since 96 you said in the states yes okay and moved, uh, and then and then i moved uh, after um uh 2003 i moved to california i took my uh, car filled up half with uh my personal belongings and half with costumes and mm-hmm. uh, and my kit and i uh, took the highway 40 and crossed to los angeles on the west coast <laughs> so Tell me, um, have you always been a creative person? I would say early on, uh, first of all, my mother is a painter. So uh, I was born with the scent of oil uh, paintings and always uh, loved touching the brushes, uh, going to the museums, uh, seeing art everywhere Mm -hmm. um, was just, you know, my visual uh, um, a landscape um and uh, i would just draw with her a lot and at one point i took classes when i was uh, about 10 years old but before i took classes i was already drawing uh, women in gowns so there was a uh, something going on so uh, was also- she was she a professional okay. painter or was she um a hobby painter uh she well, she was a teacher for uh, almost 50 years of okay. her life. Okay. Um, but she was an art teacher and uh, sometimes a English teacher. Ah. But um, she uh, had exhibits in the meantime. So I would say she is a professional um, uh, painter. Absolutely. So did she encourage you to paint as well? I think uh, there is no... Yes. The, the answer is yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's... <laughs> no bias. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Uh, so what, so your earliest creative memory would be what? The smell, the, the, the using the tools or what's your earliest? I, it's the oil paint. Mm-hmm. I smell oil paint and it just uh, fills me with joy. Uh, do you still work with oil paints at all? I, I did a few times. It, it was uh, when I started the, uh, the, te- the, the classes, uh, mm-hmm. we at one point did a cat, a Persian cat. Um, and I discovered, uh, how incredible this media, uh, medium was, um, in that I was good at it. Um, but I never persevere. And then mm-hmm. again, I would say about 15 years ago, I did a couple of, uh, uh paintings. I did a lot with acrylic mm-hmm. because as we know, acrylic dries much quicker. Yes. Um, acrylic is similar technique, um, but you can't go back. You can't uh, do much layering um, as, uh, you know, the oil allows you to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but eventually I went to the other me- media uh, medium I really love is the aquarelle, which is the, the uh, professional uh, watercoloring, the tiny little uh, dried pellets. Yes. Say. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, aquarella is is uh, you know one of my favorites, uh, but I like it all. You like? <laughs> to be honest, <That's>... <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I love the the pencils. I love uh, the mechanical uh, pencil work. I love mm-hmm. uh, ink. I like I like a lot of it. I just thrive in anything that I guess uh, you know turns into magic on paper. I'm I'm up for it. So do you consider yourself, if you had to describe yourself, would you describe yourself as um, an artist, creative, designer? What what do you, or, or do you have a different term to describe yourself? When you think of yourself as a, as a creative person, how do you describe yourself? I, I have uh, been interested and touched uh, in many, many different eras um, of the uh, artistic world. Mm-hmm. But artistic is just, for me, is you take something and you turn into something else. Mm-hmm. Uh, and if it gives joy to people or if it has a purpose, then um, 
it's art. Mm-hmm. So I'm because I use so many different uh, uh, things to uh, to create art. I would say I'm a I'm a, a gypsy artist. A gypsy. <laughs> <laughs> and being a costume designer it was, you know, one voice. Uh, it could have been, you know, graphic designer. Uh, a, I, I think um, I'm not questioning too much my uh, vocation because it was early on very uh, distinct that I would become a costume designer. But you never know. I'm still here and I can uh, jump on something else. Another. You know. So do you have... I don't know. Uh, when you're when you are doing some costumes, um, do you begin with sketches first? Yes. Uh, well, um, first there's a story to be told. Oh. Um, so whether it's a story of my own or I'm working with a um, collaborator or I'm working on a show or a TV show or a theater play, mm-hmm. whatever it is, you have to start with a. A spark, uh, and that spark is either something that was given to you as a story or um, a vision. Or you're in the street and you see a leaf falling off and the colors are so mind-blowing in the shape that a costume comes out. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's without a story. So there's there's a few different ways. Uh, but if, it, if it's linked to a professional um, uh, production, then it's a story. Do you ever Do you ever actually get involved in creating the fabric, like printing the fabric or putting the color on the fabric? Uh, I did. The coat that's behind me, Mm -hmm. uh, I printed it. I I did the the design of the blocks and I printed it, uh, silk screened it. Oh, wow. That's beautiful. We're going to get a close-up look at that after bit, too. Um, that's the dream of every costume designer that's uh, uh, extremely uh, detail-oriented mm-hmm. is to be able to weave <laughs> what you want, uh, you know, what material you want, mm-hmm. the colors you want, have the dyes that you want, um, and the texture that you want. So uh, those uh, top 10 uh, Oscar-winning costume designers or in the uh, uh, big universities, those costume designers are able to do incredible stuff mm. um, now. Now you have the pr- 3D printers that you know add even more magic. To yeah, the, that's a whole different. That's a whole different element. The 3D printing, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm gonna get there. So, do you have any of your um, sketchbooks by chance that you could show us? Do you have any any sketchbooks? Uh, I do. Oh, just my. Uh, I'm just going to go towards maybe a little bit of older. I'm just going to show a couple of drawings. This was for a sand creature. A sand creature. <laughs> okay. It's a dune, like a this in the Sahara Desert, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just, you know, it was from a, a beautiful French uh, uh, script. Um, so she came out in a second and uh, I'm just going to go this is like again out of uh, my you know uh, dreamings uh, she is a funny (laughs) I would say 1820 uh, you know creature that's funny sometimes there's no story behind Mm -hmm. or behind the 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 costume what did what were you sketching with there were you using pencils or pens uh this one uh, is uh just a regular hb uh pencil okay and um there's many the mic is going to be here the mic is here and you guys hear hear me well we're we're here and you keep going Okay. Um, I also do costumes for dance companies. Uh huh. Um, and um, one I did last year was called Agua Furiosa, which means furious waters. Okay. Um, and that was the first uh, drawing that came out. It, it was a floating water goddess. Mm. Um, and uh, again, those are the very first sketches after I had a long, extensive conversation with the choreographer uh-huh. and the you know, uh, artistic director. And after her and I went on Pinterest 
madness. As we all know, Pinterest uh, is a incredible treasure that is also taking all your time. But we, we uh, you know, because um, uh, and thanks to Pinterest, we were able to uh, combine photos and uh, came, came up with styles that she liked and mm-hmm. that would uh, thrive. So I kept going. And like this one is kind of uh, like waves, a wave corset. This is like a cascade of water mm-hmm. coming up from the back. Um, she had the three goddesses in her um, show, and this woman was playing those three roles, and she was singing while uh, the uh, company was dancing. So I'm sure that that it presents some challenges when you have to uh, create costumes that they have to be able to move in certain ways. Yes, so I discovered that. I have been uh, doing dance uh, companies for the past four years, and uh, you... Uh, it has to be durable. Uh, it has to be, um, you know, movable. Like you say, they, they, and you never know what they're going to do and how long they're going to do. A repetitive mm-hmm. movement can be very stressful on fabrics. Um, mm-hmm. So you stay away from very fragile fabrics, which you would love to do. You would love to use uh, only silks. <laughs> yeah, but those can't. So we have to. Uh, so those are just perimeters that. Um, you know, they're not really uh, 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 obstacles, but um, if she wants something that looks, uh, you know, ethereal uh, and light and and um, and and rich, uh, we have to find a synthetic mm-hmm. um, fabric. So that's another. After we um, pick the designs, um, so basically, you're you're once you've sketched, then you have to start painting with fabric in a three-dimensional way that's very that's that's true that's it yeah keep showing keep don't put it away keep showing <laughs> so those were the colors we uh wanted to uh use um it was the water world um but it was also uh, the identity of uh south america and africa combined um so we just um it's an L.A., uh, Los Angeles-based uh, theater uh, dance company. Um, and then I came up with little little dresses uh, because dancers love flowy fabric um, because it really enhanced the movement of their bodies. Mm-hmm. So uh, the, design, the choreographer wanted a 1950s-ish, uh, you know, um, era. So some of them of the a line and it's total circle skirt skirts mm-hmm. so you have a lot of movements so after that i had to search for fabrics or already made uh, uh dresses that i could uh, alterate or paint or dye or cut you know just do the the whole thing so i have a question for you from one of the viewers uh what is the process is, do they start with um uh, do you start with the design first or the budget first or how, what is the you know, the process in the, in the beginning. I know you said you start with a story and then. Uh, uh, the first meeting, most of the time, unless it's been uh, in the e- first email you get <laughs> is about a budget. Um, so once we uh, establish, establish a look, how many dancers I have, um, the budget is, uh, you know, uh, the first thing I have to look at. And I have to, uh, you know, split it and how many people I have and the importance of certain costumes versus others. Mm -hmm. Uh, For example, on the movie, you have the main actors and then you have the background uh, actors. Uh, I'm going to put, if I have one background person and one main actor, I'm going to put most of the money on the uh, main actor. So are you, are you deciding how to, how to, um, how did that money get split up then, huh? Yes. You get to do that deciding, yeah. Yes. So how did you how do you get the job to begin with? Do you is there a certain process of submission, or is it based on recommendation, or how do you uh, how do you get there? Uh, it's a friend of a friend. It's somebody I've worked with before who's going to recommend me. Um, it's you know, it's pretty much a word to mouth um, networking. Uh, I've rarely got jobs from, you know, just blind uh, emailing or, mm-hmm. 
or calling productions I've never worked with, but maybe it's going to happen tomorrow. Right. <laughs> but there's nothing quite like that recommendation from someone else that, that says, you really need to talk to Rosa. You need to talk to Rosalita Medina because she is the top person. There's nothing like that, you know. And there's she, already good connections right there, right. Uh, especially if we if we worked together before. Yes, they, they know where I'm capable, um, and they know that person. They're like, oh, you guys have an energy that would work, mm -hmm. uh, you know, well. Or she's specialized. Not that I'm really specialized, mm -hmm. but the more the costumes are. Uh, creatively out of the box mm -hmm. present day um, I do it it's not uh, my favorite but I've done it for years so what I is what is your favorite thing to do to create show us some of those this. ah <laughs> that's your favorite how cool this is another uh, ballet and Did it take you a long did it take you a long time to learn to do the gesture drawings and with the figures did you have to go to school to learn to do that I did uh, what really helps with the body in movement is the 10 second one minute uh, live uh, drawing with a body in front of your real person uh -huh. those I did it for three years um, it was incredible, but I still have a hard time. Um, like the 10 second, you only get to do, you know what I mean? Yeah. Three or four, uh, you know, uh, steps. So what you have to do is use your eye as a camera, just mm -hmm. like a camera. Okay. When a camera goes click, click, your eye does the same when you blink. So if I'm going like this, all you're gonna get is that there is a diagonal uh, diagonal um, uh, uh, movement mm -hmm. and then a vertical and this is how you start with movement I love that I love that concept that idea that you just said use your eye as the camera I think that so many of us uh, artistic types of people creative people have um, the biggest challenge we have is learning to see and it's learning it is learning to use your eye as a camera where you really see what's there, not what you think is there, but you really see that movement of that, you know, that line. And when you distill down movement to such a degree of, of a line, instead of the details of the hands and the, the facial features and all that kind of thing, it just, it's an incredible distillation process, which I think that that everyone, no matter who they are, could really benefit from. Um, do you find that you get rusty and you have to go back and and practice those it's skills? It's very strange. I'm, uh, I had periods of times where I was only working on set, movie sets, and I was not a costume designer. I was dressing the actors for years and years. So I didn't draw much. Um, and then I would have spurs of incredible creative things full of details and I'd never, it's like I had never stopped. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes if I start in purpose, I'm like, I have to draw. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. Wow. But so in some ways, yes. In some moments, no. So it's a really uh, different, but I would uh, uh, add to the photographic memory that you use with your eyesight is that you are going to, um, you're going to see the movement, but you're going to see the rhythm. It's all about mm -hmm. rhythm. Rhythm. The energy of that body. What's the energy of the body? If it's uh -huh. loud she, mm -hmm. then it's, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it, it's all, so for the dance, you know, it's really much even more important than if it was just a regular uh, illustration for a movie. Most of the time, it's static. Uh, it doesn't have to be. That's but. fascinating. What are some of the movies that you've worked on that, they, that the viewers might recognize? As a costumer, mm -hmm. I think the the famous ones are Pirates of the Caribbean two and three, uh, the Patriot, um, what's the name of it? Uh, Wedding Crashers. <laughs> I have to have humor in life. That's you know, right. Or, or any kind of movies. As a designer, uh, I uh, did a movie called Bitch Slap. Uh, <laughs> very interesting. 
interesting, uh, <laughs> but it had many, many. I had 35 costumes just from my three main characters. So wow. it, it's a genre that's not for everybody. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very, um, I would say, uh, uh, very, a little bit violent, a little bit uh, uh, silly, Didn't or very silly. And technical um, is putting me back on track. Uh, a couple of years ago, we uh, we did a uh, Western uh, a genre I loved when I was a kid. I loved spaghetti movies. And there he is. Um, um, I think I can, I think I can even show them. I think I can even show them here. Let me, uh, let me see if I can. Oh, a, a, an illustration uh, of the movie. Okay, let me see if I can, uh, while you do that, let me see if I can show them. Um, let me hang on just a minute here. Okay, so hold on just a second. Because what I'm going to show you, wait a minute, there we go. Okay, so those of you guys that are in the, um, oops, sorry, I'm getting, messing around with my computer. Those of you that are seeing the, um, you should be seeing on the screen at the moment, this is from Rosa's website, and what you'll see in this center uh, the center image right in the center of the picture where it says Mojave Junction that happens to be the young man up in the top corner that happens to be the technical director that's Race Owen who was one of the he was the lead actor in Mojave Junction this was a short film and Rosa did the costuming for this so you have both people that are in the interview today in the in the stream with us are um, in these productions, which is now, pretty hold cool. Hold on a second. I'm yes. going to sneak in here for a second. Okay. You need to tell everyone that I had you do the background of the movie poster. Well, that's true, too. So, so your, your artistic work was the basis, the foundation for that movie poster. Then I took two images and place them over the top of your already existing artwork. I might have touched it up just a little bit in Photoshop, but that is your, that was mom's uh, original artwork that is the foundation for the back of that movie poster. That's true. And I'll tell you more about how I created that poster background in a minute. So if somebody will jar my memory in case I forget, I'll tell you more about that. But that's true. That's true. So this is some of Rosa's work right here. The costuming work. This is race, the technical department that we're listening to. So we'll scroll through some of her pictures. This is also from Mojave Junction. This is Ed Marinera. That's the actor. This is Ed Marinera right here. He was also in the film. So these are some of the other um, costuming. Add yes, go ahead, Rosa. This was a, a very quick sketch, um, and as you can see, the movement of the a duster, uh -huh. this is full of duster, mm -hmm. uh, they would wear it, it splits all the way up in the back. Uh, you can't see this one? Not yet, just hold on. We're looking at your website, so we just talk to us about your website, and then we're going to come back to you and look at the, the sketch, okay? Yes, perfect. So at the moment, what we're seeing on the screen is Fred 2, Night of the Living Fred. So you costumed for Night of the Living Fred, Fred 2, right? Yes. I uh, was very surprised when I got the phone call. Um, but uh, again, the exec, uh, executive producer was a, a very dear friend of mine and who I've done tons of uh, shows or commercials with. Um, and she pushed uh, for them, for the production company, to have me, and it was very, it was so much fun. It's a, it's a teenage movie, I would say, mm -hmm. but so many costumes. So you don't see photos in there, but it's a, uh, it was hilarious. Well, the things of I, as I'm scrolling through your website, some of these costumes are with the masks and so forth are a riot. They are just a riot to look at with the 
look like gas masks and all kinds of. It was like a bla- uh, um, sorry, that was like a Mad Max um, a sh- a short movie we did in uh, the, one of the desert in North Carolina. It was an incredible place. And then it looks like we've got um, some cost it's costumes. TV, yes, it's that- a TV show uh, with Spike TV Network, and it's crazy uh, ways of dying. So- okay. <laughs> We did two movies a day. We would shoot two movies a day. It was absolutely insane. But I did a lot of period costuming. Mm -hmm. uh, So that was very interesting. Uh, Of course, a lot of stunts, a lot of uh, fake blood. um, But overall, uh, I had the opportunity for four years to uh, tap into many different periods. And as a costume designer, it's a very, I mean, of my, uh, my sort, it's very dreamy. So I would rent a lot of period costumes, or some of them are made, like the Greek era. I did some research. Very little budgets. Mm-hmm. Usually about two hundred dollars per episode. <clears throat> wow, that is <laughs> but, not much to work with. But sometimes when we had much more, they would, uh, you know, they would give in, and I would have to make a presentation to have more money. So you have to come up with a uh, the the perfect uh, uh, reasons you know, and just make a plan. Um, then I did some videos. Uh, the Indian lady uh, was a video with a, a, that race had produced. Uh-huh. Uh, and I built uh, this dress out of a, a fabric sari. This one, the yeah. Orange. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. It was uh, very beautiful. I, I, I much, uh, mm. much, much care uh, deeply for the uh, Indian um, artistry of, uh, you know, fabric making and, and their whole... Uh, vision of colors is just incredible yes that yeah i totally agree with that we're going to take a look for a second at your graphic art um section of your site here and so these were one of the uh sketchbook images that we have on the screen that's one of the images you showed us just a little bit ago in your uh from your sketchbook and so we're looking at some of the different sketches that you have so these look very illustrative Um, again capturing movement and um, phenomenal they're just phenomenal to I can't even speak they're they're just so much fun to look at and um, now the things that you have in the graphic area the illustration and graphic area of your site, are these things that were for you personally or were these for different productions? Uh, first of all, thank you. You're touching me. <laughs> They're just Very beautiful. Have your feedback. Uh, the three that are right there, the first one I painted after I took classes six years ago. I was like, I need to get back into classes. And uh, um, and then the others are from my last year of fashion school. Mm. Uh, the middle one is, is uh, a tree of life uh, that has the four seasons. Uh, it has the uh, astronomic, uh, uh, astronomy, uh, uh, astronomy signs, the numbers. It, it was for a astronomer. It's kind of like the almanac. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the and then a tarot card right after that that he also uh, asked me to uh, to make for his work. Uh, yeah, the just four, incredible the are tarot cards. So I just uh, di- uh, uh, dove. Sorry, dove into the uh, symbolic of uh, the tarot cards, and uh, the images came up. Those are uh, those are really incredible. Um, what I want to encourage people to do is I want to encourage you guys to spend some time later going to uh, Rosa's because that's just a tiny little bit. Um, that's a tiny little bit of her website. So, you know, spend some time looking around in her website and looking at all of the, the images and things and see that you can see the scope of her work there and, or at least a portion of it, which is amazing so um before i forget it let me tell you this story we'll take a little side thing and then what i want to do after i tell this little story is what we want to do is take the um ipad and go over and say that see the details in some of your costumes so that's where we're going to go so the uh movie poster i said i would tell you the pro the uh, story of that the poster from mojave junction which 
race was in and rosa was the costumer designer for for that production race called me and said could you paint some backgrounds and for this um uh, for this movie poster and i'm thinking well how hard can that be he said just use some watercolors right i guess i could talk to you a little bigger than i am at the moment couldn't i let's see let's see if i can put myself yeah so i can talk to you a little bit uh, a little bit bigger so anyway he asked me if i would get some watercolors and paint some just paint a background and he showed me an example of one and so i'm like okay yeah i can do that well, I'm going to tell you something, people. I have a very, very picky, uh, very high standard technical director. <laughs> and I painted, I painted for an entire weekend to come up with, because I was trying to match his concept, you know, his mental concept. And so it took me a weekend and I painted many, many pieces of paper and we finally got one that that was the suggested the mood and you know when he got to the point where he said well it just needs to look like dried blood i'm like okay <laughs> and we got the one there there were a series of two or three of them that looked like they were going to work and he said okay just take good pictures of them and send them to me and i said what with my iphone because that's what i had at that point so instead, I boxed them up and shipped them to uh, shipped them to him, and he took pictures and <laughs> and worked on the movie poster. Then, so that's the rest of the story behind the movie poster. Okay, so let's go back to Rosa. Um, let's see. Oh, she left the building. Yes, Hi. and now she's back. So. Um, so, Race, can you help her get the iPad? A um up there is so she can take it over and show it to, show the costumes to us in some detail i think she wanted to show you a sketch okay two. sure oh sure oh yes yes so this is from mojave junction right yes um and as you can see what's the movement of what's the energy of uh, this uh drawing it's the wind yeah the wind. wind in the desert is a, a third person. It's, it's like a, a, an invisible god. Mm -hmm. So um, the duster just, you know, emphasis, uh, you know, emphasized the, and shows us that it's there. So that's why the movement, it's a very quick one. Um, and I didn't have much of details, uh, you know, put into it. But it was just about showing how important the dusters were for those travelers mm -hmm. uh, on the horses. And uh, that is why... Is, is now, now, is that with graphite or charcoal, or what did you use to capture that the uh, image? Yeah, I first uh, uh, just use a, a regular pencil. Uh, I don't you use the uh, techni uh, the technical, um, the, I mean the mechanical one, mm -hmm. unless I want to do very uh, detailed, you know. So just a regular uh, HB uh, uh, wood, and then I think it is a. Uh, no, it's Carandash. The the in English, I don't know, but uh, yeah, Carandash. Uh, yeah, Carandash, mm -hmm. uh, uh, black, and then I, I just you know, with your finger. Uh, so, okay, little shade, a little bit of a shading uh, thing, and then after that, it's all about the details, and uh, just if you want something specific, so you can remember afterward, you just start, you know. Um, detailing everything so you have a lot of notes on there to remind yourself of what you were thinking i guess huh yes if mm -hmm. i was to have this made this would be uh what i would give to uh the tailor okay um, so you know it's easier to communicate um a, an idea that's on you know on 2d on two dimension mm -hmm. for something to be made in three dimension you need as many as much detail as possible uh, for the other person to understand what you want. So you don't always do all the sewing then. Is that correct? No. Uh, depending on the budget and uh, if it's like this is a period show, it was uh, uh, 1850, I believe. 1892. 1892. <laughs> it's been a few years. 
Um, so I did research, of course, uh, uh, the period and looked at uh, uh, photos of that time. Mm -hmm. We already had photos. Um, and there's a, a few costume houses that rent uh, period costumes. For the budget, I had to do rentals. Yeah. If I have to make it uh, myself, I can. Mm -hmm. It takes me a, a, it's it's a lot of time. You have to do, a, a, you know, trials mm -hmm. and errors. Um, but you still, but you still had to originate the concept of, and then have the vision of how to put it all together. So and, that's uh, very important. Meetings with them and and uh, having fittings and mm -hmm. see what's the best, what fits the best for the character. Yeah, uh, their skin tone, uh, the color of the sand, um, the the you know the vision of the director of photography. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the director as well. We are all it's a, it's a incredible um you know show um it's an incredible uh dance of of i of uh, people's um brain like we are all it's not just me i'm not uh, yeah. the one deciding it's, it's a i can just effort. imagine that there's a lot of creative sparking going on in those meetings where there's all of this frenetic creative concept and energy going around it must be a it must be fun, and it also must be a little frustrating sometimes to be in so much creative craziness. If you're not, your mind is not open, and if we don't have the same vision, it's got to be a common vision, mm -hmm. or you have to have an open mind. If yeah. you don't have an open mind and you don't have a creative vision, then you walk on, on, uh, on breaking ice because uh, the person can change their mind or the thing is not going to work, or it's mm -hmm. going to look terrible at the end. Yeah, we all have to, uh, you know, be really open. So it's it's. So can we take uh, some close-up looks? Do you think, or do you have some other things to? Sh love to. Okay. Uh, uh, shall we look at the? You want to? Oh, uh, here's one of my. Uh, you were talking about okay. technique. Yes. Um, a. Uh, I'm gonna switch to the iPad. Okay. There we go. This is acrylic. Uh, it's acrylic, but I I uh, used the the oil technique. So that means I worked that acrylic a little longer. Mm -hmm. um, but it's my eye. Um, and, uh, I, uh, for me, it's the symbolic of, um, my graphic, uh, art. It's, it's, it's about vision. It's about an open door. Mm -hmm. uh, you open, you start, you open the door before you open the door, you open it with your eye. It's beautiful, Rosa. Absolutely um, beautiful. And it's seeing it like skin has millions and millions of shades and colors and pigments. Skin is incredible. Mm -hmm. You have so much to talk about. Everybody's skin, every pieces of their body is, is a miracle of colors. So that's why it was, you know, a project, a personal project that I really loved. And yeah. And even though it, it, it doesn't describe a costume, it's part of it. Yes, sure. Sure. That's great. So, um, great. Beautiful. Okay. So, Mr. Mr. Ray. Um, yeah, Whoops. this is. Oh, it's... Hold on. Okay. Oop. Oh, sorry. There we go. Got it. We got it. Okay, it should be back. Nope. <laughs> Almost. Sorry, we've got a little sound thing happening. I'm missing something. Not sure what happened there. Yeah, something. Something, something. went goofy. Yeah, and then there's the sound from the horror movies. That's what Annette said. That's yeah, right. right. <laughs> Cue the horror movie sound <laughs> sound effects. <laughs> All right, hold on. Weird thing. Sure it's just 
You guys have to know that there's a lot of moving parts going on here with a lot of pieces of equipment. So the fact that it that we have a problem from time to time is not a shock. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, cue the horror movies. Sound. Well, wait, that's a nice big picture of your hand. <laughs> that's okay. It is understandable. I'm glad you guys understand. <laughs> Hi, Angelica. So let's see. I don't know if I have answered all of the um, the questions that have come in because I'm sure I missed some. Um, okay, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear okay, you. Okay, the problem, the, what happened is just so technically, is that when you went back to the IMAX shot or the wide shot, it opened up the, uh, the microphone. Oh. That's what changed. Okay. So that I didn't know that was going to happen, so it wasn't your fault. It was my my misunderstanding. Okay, uh, we got it. Stay on the iPad, and then we'll just do the rest on the iPad. Okay, hold on. Let me get back to the iPad here. Okay, we're at the iPad. Okay, hold on. <clears throat> All right, we should be back to where we were. Okay. So now the rest of it's going to be shaky cam. I'll be the cameraman. Okay. <laughs> shaky cam. Okay. There's Miss Rosa. Okay. Rosa, you can talk to the, the, the uh, beautiful ladies and just show us what you want to So talk. when I'm not uh, drawing for costumes, um, like this is for me a, 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 a also another symbol. It's the tree of life mm -hmm. uh, where you, as much as... Uh, possible need to be as grounded as your head has to be uh, in the ethereal world so um i just uh, i've i have a costume one day that will <laughs> that will symbolize the uh, the tree of life but mm. i have there are more free drawings where i don't i'm not really thinking but it's all about colors and and uh this is like the three different worlds i i don't have a lot to uh um, Those are great, Rosa. Those are really they, nice. They're fun. They're they're just. Um, I have a lot of fun uh, uh, doing them. I also lose myself. I don't. Uh, my identity is pure. It's pure uh, design. I, I I don't judge the drawings. If yeah. I do judge, I, I stop myself. I'm like, you just did it. That's all that matters. Moving on. Yes. So I move on, and you know, um, it's just very this is a this is my um this is a flower i invented and That's, there you go mm -hmm. it's an ancient flower it's an ancient uh, flower you invented i like that yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the the many uh, cycle of moon uh-huh moon cycles um this uh is the essence of life it's uh the world in one drop of water mm -hmm. this is birth you know just uh uh, we have a say, this is a little, uh, cute little whale. <laughs> <laughs> we have to say a friend, uh, when some, something is secret, but it's not so secret. You say that there's a, um, there's a, a there's a whale under a little pebble. Mm -hmm. so that's why she has a little pebble on her head. Okay. Hide, but there's no way you can hide her under a little pebble. That's right. So a little illustration. Um, and then I had beautiful flowers, uh, that were, uh, offered to me so i i uh, decided to uh because that's also in a great way to keep uh, practicing yes to uh paint what you see yes the first thing mm -hmm. beautiful and, orchids uh, thank you and then you know do you see this it looks like to me um little livers yeah if you look closely, yeah that's like true so nature <laughs> takes you to other places that mm -hmm. are very different but mm -hmm. uh of textures are, are also great to paint. Uh, this was the, the heart that keeps, uh, it's the heart of all textures. Uh, it's wood, it's, uh, it's nature, it's uh, uh, stones. Uh, there is life in everything. Uh, this is another ancient flower. Another ancient flower that you created? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love those. Thank you. Uh, that was a start of something. 
Uh, I believe uh, it's uh, my boyfriend's name. Yes, now I remember. It's it's Saeed. Um, and then uh, this was a the dream of a well. It's another well. I am a. It's a little bit of everything. Uh, this is an homage to the Native American. Uh, it's a culture I uh, dearly uh, care for. Um, You're getting lots of love from the viewers, Rosa. Oh, they love <laughs> they love looking through your sketchbooks with you. Wonderful, wonderful. I am uh, very happy to share and and um, you know just ask me any questions. Um, but I really appreciate your loving feedback. Are sure. you are you using mostly watercolor in this journal? Yes. Again, like this is a uh, this is my mother's. It is sold, I can't even tell you, mm -hmm. but I keep on refilling the little uh, pellets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure there's some of her paintings in there, you know, her little choices of colors. That's great. And then I got myself a new one, but uh, so I just, I go. Uh... It's such, it's such a treasure to have but, something like that. Yeah. This is, to having my mom, like she, she's when I need some force, I start painting with this. Mm -hmm. like she's passing on to me her uh, magical powers. <laughs> if I can say that, you know, being a, a creative one, we're a little bit. So I would say that this is a, yes, it's it's made out of that. So, yeah. you know, you just explore the colors. It's hard because watercolor doesn't go away. Once it's on the paper, oops, you mm -hmm. have to work with it. So you better know, uh, decide before. Um, which colors and uh, how much water are you going to have, how much op opacity, what are you going to use for the, the light. Right. Usually mm -hmm. with watercolor, you use the, the color of the paper for light. Where the light hits the object, you mm -hmm. should keep it white. You should not put any color on it. That right. That was uh, one of the first rules. But rules are made to be broken. So that's true. At one point, we can start with that and then move forward with what we want because they do have white watercolor <laughs> they do that's true that's cindy cool. says that your art makes her happy oh thank you so much and kathy kathy says it's incredible how you how free you are in your sketchbook so they like they're enjoying this the viewers are enjoying this i am appreciating so much and and it's a great place to be and i wish i was there more often <laughs> yes I think it's a great lesson. I think it's uh, it's me. It's yes, that was a, a little profile. <laughs> that's with great. Colors. Yes, uh, I think uh, that's it with this book. But do you have any favorite kind of sketchbook paper that you use, or do you just use whatever you have? Uh, yes, and but really for the aqua uh, aquarelle, uh, I would say the thickest. This is a um, grainy, very thick grainy uh, watercolor because uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, uh, bundle as much. Well, this did because I put so much water. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went over with the um, the uh, sketch pens. Yeah, to put the details in. Yes, I mm -hmm. love those. They come in any, uh, you know, a thin, they have different uh, sizes. Yeah, we all love those. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> you would. Oh, yeah. Those are great pens. But uh, I don't know where. Oh, yeah. Here it is. When I was in Paris this uh, winter to visit my mom, I got me an old, 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 old uh, way of, of using. It's the rot ring. I'm sure you guys know. Uh huh. It's the one you refill. It's the same yeah. one you refill it. And I, I, I'm really more and more into... Uh, sustainable and in the arts we waste a lot as well true if I refill those pens i don't have to trash anything yeah that's so great I, this will come out of the box very soon i'm super happy and you see you, you just have the little ink it, it's a little messy you have to uh, be patient with the with the whole thing because sometimes they clog up mm -hmm. so you have to clean it after every use especially if you don't use it for uh, a week or more than that so that was another uh Another thing that I loved in my 20s, and then I, I and then I stopped, and I forgot about it until I was at the art store drooling. <laughs> and and you just had to do it. 
and it was my uh, uh, birthday present from my mom. So, oh, that's great. That's I'll, great. I'll share with you, uh, 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 Barb, when I do something with it. Okay. I would love that. Thank you. So I think... Uh, Rosa, would you like to show the uh, people some of your designs on the yes, mannequins so, back here? Uh, uh, as well as uh, graphic uh, art, I uh, had to learn how to uh, make those costumes I drew. So I uh, took uh, uh, three years in a fashion school, um, and uh, then I was do working in uh, theaters, you know, local theaters. Um, and m my first dress complete, I would say, is this one. Uh, wow. It's made out of, uh, uh, so the drawing, uh, I am not so sure where it is, but it looks like a dragon when you, when you go from far, like a dragon tail. But it's a fire dress. Mm -hmm. uh, and all those little uh, fire leaves are individually uh, sewn with a sewing machine, a uh, tight zigzag. Is it is it velvet? It is yes. It's okay. a it's a it's a polyester velvet. I, I believe. I don't think it's a silk velvet. Mm -hmm. um, but the thread, if you can see it, it goes from uh, a uh, magenta to a pink. Mm -hmm. So the bobbin was like that. That's why it gives highlights. Yeah. Um, and then uh, my mother, myself, and a friend, we stitch those. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> with stitch those, I think I stitch my finger with the sewing machine. Mm, I've done that. That hurts a lot. <laughs> it was fun. It was fun. Uh, it's it's old. It's a uh, it's a uh, twenty four, twenty five years old. Beautiful. And tell me about the the coat on the outside. That's one you said you printed. Yes. This is uh, the last uh, school. This is my uh, uh, last uh, uh, year of. Uh, the fashion show uh, for the last year uh, and the theme my theme was the sacred mountains of the world hmm. and this one uh, was the uh, Japanese uh, Mount, Mount Fuji Fujiyama mm -hmm. so uh, it's it was a I think I used for for the original uh, block uh, screen I think I, I, I when I drew it it had some uh, acrylic you know, use with a, a knife. The knife yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And then after that, I uh, I just I think it was a uh, pencil. Um, and then I did I had to do a three screen because uh, uh, no, I'm sorry, two screen, one for the brown and one for the uh, ecru that's in the back. It's phenomenal, Rosa. It's absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. What is the fabric? The base so, fabric? Cotton? Uh, yes, it's a canvas. It's a uh, yes, it's a canvas. Canvas. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. Budget, budget wise, you know, I would have loved to, to try something else, but uh, the coat uh, had to. Uh, it had to transcend. It had to, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, 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 really, amp uh, you know, give the, uh, the pattern its full extent of, of um, greatness. And that's why I had to make somehow a, a block coat, like a, a style that was. So how big was your screen that you were working with on that? Was it a very large screen? Yes, uh, let me turn it around. So maybe, uh, um, I believe, yeah, this is, this is the full uh, width of the fabric. Uh, it, it was probably uh, more than a, a yard. Wow. And it was, let me think if I, the rep repetition is here. So it's about twen uh, 14 inches by 40 inches. That's a big screen to manage. Wow. Yes. We're very lucky to have a one of the oldest screening house in Versailles, uh, France. Mm -hmm. uh, that that was a uh, you know incredible year, uh, and the teacher you know helped us uh, figuring it out. That's but, wonderful. Well, people in the chat are saying it's beautiful. It's very cool. The code is spectacular and amazing. So everybody's liking seeing your your uh, translation of your work into the 
into the garments too. Yes, I, I think. Uh, oof, that, that's a that's a dream to to be able to. Uh, oop, I put Tuesday with Monday. Uh, <laughs> I love that. Put Tuesday with Monday. <laughs> Do you have a sketch of that? Uh, it's uh, on the website. Do you have it in like one of your books? Yes. So just give me a second. I'm gonna have her show you, you know, a dot, a uh, a piece over here that she designed and then made into um, an actual physical wardrobe piece. Okay. That way you can see the connection between the design element and then the physical element at the end. That's great. Great idea. So she's run away to grab the design first. Yeah. If she, if she's like me, she has to figure out in her memory where it is. <laughs> then go find it. But it's here. Um, all right. One of them is the one. Oops. So the, this is the, the same theme of the Sacred Mountain. Do you see? Ah, yes. But it's, uh, this, those are my uh, pre, uh, this is all the research. Um, this is the jewelry that would go with it. There's their stalactite or stalagmite. Mm. That was the, the sand dune. I had the sand dune. I had the, the volcanic mountain, sacred mountain. I hope I'm going to get to that drawing. <laughs> so all of, all of this was in preparation for creating the coat. That's correct. Wow. Uh, one of the, the, the designs. So, uh, let me just, uh, where are you, coat? So see, like this is a sand dune coat uh, dress, which um, I might have somewhere. Yes, I do have it. Uh, so I, I, I literally decided to show what my uh, dress is, was going to look like as a presentation before I made it. So you see the the top stitch. Uh huh. Yeah. This time I was not a real great stitcher. It takes years and years, <laughs> but at least you have the idea. This was the uh, uh, the top of the dress. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, this was another option. It's raw silk, Shantung raw silk. Mm -hmm. um, this is another, you know, graphic. Uh, you know, just 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 to uh, to get get to the texture, you you have to go through that. I painted the little buttons. Uh, oh, that's cool! I didn't realize those were actually buttons. Yes. <laughs> wow. Oh, and this was the 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 drawing was you know under there. Um, wow, it's so fascinating to see your process. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. You have to, uh, uh, this was a volcan volcano dress um, and the lava, you know, when the lava just layers and ripples, mm -hmm. you have to uh, find ways to transcript it with uh, fabrics and those are like tubing. <laughs> wow. Uh, this was the volcanic dress. So the sample that you just showed, that that's what the dress became? Uh, the dress, this is a different dress. Oh, so different I'm, one. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's been all over the, the place. Let me see if I can find you something else. Are you guys enjoying this? I hope you are. Because just to be able to get inside the mind of another creative person from a different um, type of creativity i just think it's fascinating to see how her mind is working in the design process and the the creation of the concept from beginning to end don't you guys love that amazing of a pray, praying mantis costume wow <laughs> i know a, a little bit of darkness sure out of this but you know you have to uh, be inspired by everything this is the sand dune dress oh wow wow 
Wow, that's this amazing. Is a, this is a acrylic. Uh, this is watercolor and acrylic. Uh huh. And then, and then on top, I uh, came. Uh, I varnished uh, just the dress and the hair. So mm -hmm. you see how shiny. Uh huh. But not her skin. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And this is the this is the volcanic dress with the layers of lava. Ah, the f lava flowing. Yeah. I didn't get to make this one, but maybe I will. That's right. That's great. And, uh, the dress from the coat, the, the illustration is right here. Nope, this is not right here it is. So this is a bit of a, a different way to do it. I uh, reduced the, uh, the drawing. Mm-hmm. And then I printed the uh, sketching onto uh, um, plastic. Is that like of a, I know there's a name, but you can, you know, you can uh, a thin, uh, a thin film. Yes, mm -hmm. like a transparency. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That's it. That's exactly. So that's how I, uh, I uh, decided to present the illustration. Mm -hmm. um, this is another. This is my uh, um, little ant. A, she's an ant. Yes, I see that. Little, mm -hmm. Or she's a little beetle. Now that I uh, see, uh, you know, the the work, the the texture on her uh, uh, upper skirt. Mm -hmm. But this was going to be uh, a caged headpiece, mm -hmm. so metal. Wow. Um, this is watercolor. Uh, this is oil paint, uh, and uh, uh, literally a pe uh, a pen, a bowl pen. That's amazing that you use all the different mediums on the on the yes. paper to get whatever it is that you need. That's really cool. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and this is this is the ice uh, mountain, the uh, sacred ice uh, mountain. Uh, this is uh, acrylic, <laughs> uh, and then brushed, um, and this was uh, ink, the white ink. Mm -hmm. the white. That's so. great. Can you show us some more of your garments that you have there too? Uh, so the next one uh, is, uh, I did a short movie uh, called The Demon Garden. And uh, my actress, uh, who was an amazing 80 year old, uh, a fantastic Florida actress, uh, so I don't have a head, but was wearing this cloaked, um, doesn't really have a period, uh, you know, to it, but you can, you can see a lot of uh, uh, different, I, I put like little um, turn of the century uh, metal pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, those are beetle wings. Those are real beetle wings. Wow. It's a little weird, but you can never, now they're uh, able to reproduce this, but at the time, uh, when you see uh, costumes from the 1920s, they had little pieces of this. And nobody could figure it out what it was. Yeah. Yeah. In the nature, you can only see it in, in uh, 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 beetle wings, mm -hmm. the, the metallic iridescent. So I one day was in a, a, a thrift, not a, thr a flea market, and they had a bunch of these. And I freaked out. And I was like, I realized what it was. <laughs> uh, so it's a little weird. Um, they're probably from um, Bali, I would say. Uh, but I, I just needed to uh you know combine the colors together here this is a little more of it um this these are fake synthetic hair uh weaves that i just oh, wow that's synthetic hair i'll be darned yes. amazing <laughs> i thought they were feathers <laughs> yeah, i would love to uh, when you come to see us in la we'll have a fitting that's right uh, <laughs> yes this is a a, a great denim that I found that was textured with a, a flock velvet on. Hmm. It looks like a wall or marble. Yeah, it does. Old a, a trim, metallic trim. That's probably um, those are all handmade. This this handmade trim. This is a clasp from the 1910s. It was real, wow. uh, you know, Art Deco uh, piece that I wanted to. Uh, to use because she she when she first comes in it's closed like this mm -hmm. 
So you have to think about all those details when you do your costumes. Is it going to be worn open? Is it going to be taken off? You have to uh, dress the... Uh, if we take this off, I have to uh, finish the dress entirely. Yeah, so she sure. Only opened it like this. So I did a, a little veil for her neck. Uh, she was very cold, so uh, we decided to do something that was with the same color range and had a little bit of light so the, the camera would pick up. Um, so I did give her a little... Uh, like a little medieval uh, neck piece. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Beautiful. And, uh, the the dress part. It's an uh, it's a thrift store dress that I um, you know just dressed. Uh, those are cording. It, those are you find it in the army store. <laughs> uh, they're little netting uh, made out of uh, natural fibers that they use to uh, camouflage stuff. So I dyed it. I dye the, the uh, strands, strands and uh, just start to uh, stitch them a little bit. Like, since she's a garden demon, <laughs> she had to have a lot of natural uh, nature elements to her. And the, hence the bugs, the vines, the roots, you know, she's a, um, but since she's also uh, um, a not so nice demon, she uh, uh, takes the souls of uh, her victims. Uh -huh. I want Give her a little bit of a, you know, um, a dehumanize, like she uses, that's why she has human hair. Mm -hmm. um, and then a very great detail. At one point, she has a vial that has a soul in it. And so her hands were going to be extremely uh, featured. It was going to be a close up. So I made those leather gloves with two different leathers. Uh, wow. This leather has uh, little specks of copper, of uh, uh, um, ancient gold. And then under it, I put a copper leather and I just, you know, hole punched so it would come through. But as you can see, there's only two fingers because it was hard to, uh, to sew, <laughs> but I did. Uh, glove making is, a, is an art. Yes, it is. A sewing machine, which I don't have. So making a two finger one was uh, great for me. So because she, she was featuring that little vial like this, uh, I wanted to also feature the gloves, um, but I didn't want uh, her hands to totally disappear in the mm -hmm. color. Um, that, so. that is really cool, Rosa. The amount, the level of thinking that has to go into the costuming is just incredible. Yes. Uh, but it's fun. Yeah. This fun project because I was able to uh, to use a lot of the a lot of this was already in my uh, uh, in my boxes of uh, goodies. Yeah. As I call it. Yes. And I was finally so able to uh, to use pieces that were sleeping. Mm -hmm. So it's not always the case. So one of the questions in the chat was, "Do you get to keep all the costumes that you design?" This one I did because everything came from uh, my costume shop. And um, uh, it was an understanding at the beginning of, of the show. I said, if mm -hmm. what I have you like and we can use, uh, then I will keep the costume. If not, you, most of the time they keep everything. That's why I only have my school projects uh -huh. and, and this one. I have a few, uh, a couple of others, but uh, it would take another 10 hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, no, I don't keep the costumes. They mm -hmm. belong to the production most of the time. Yeah, and okay. Actors, uh, if it's in their contract, they keep it. Gotcha. So, uh, so it just depends. It varies from one from one production to another. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. I'll show you the, the back. Um, it has, it's just very much uh, inspired from bugs and... Uh, and I didn't have enough of the same color of the weave, but it didn't matter because, as you can see, all those colors go really well together. So sometimes it's a, a lucky, uh, a luck, lucky accident. Yeah. Uh, uh, and this is a an incredible uh, pleated. Those are hand hand pleated fabrics. I don't know if you ever seen uh, how they pleat. Um, I don't think we have. It's two layers of pleated paper. 
uh, no, it's two layers of paper. The fabric is uh, in between sandwiched mm -hmm. and they start to pleat like this. Oh my. Together, they attach it. I believe they uh, put them in a certain uh, um, chemical or not, or just wet. And then when you take it out, then it mir uh, you know, magically uh, stays that way. Oh, but it's done between sheets of paper. How interesting. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure you do too. So this was more, to me, it, it reminded me of, of a dying skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes you have to go there. You have to go to uh, elements that are not so much fun. But when you talk about a demon a, 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 and a demon that takes souls, you have to go to the death. So you have to, what are the textures of death? Mm -hmm. Sometimes in certain, uh, you know, uh, in horror movies, it goes really far. So yeah. Was uh, but it's the research you have to do. So for me, it was like decaying skin. So I, that's why I picked. It's uh, it's very effective. It's very effective. It was lovely. You have, uh, I believe, uh, uh, probably a couple of photos, um, and uh, in in the website, and then. Very soon and next week there will be a reel. Uh, a a reel is uh, is like yeah. a little video of uh, all those scenes. So you you're gonna see a race uh, in a, in the western. You're gonna see this lady. In oh great! So that will be on your website. Yes, I, I'll see in the next week. Oh good, that's great. So we'll come back and and we'll see it on your website. That's great. Well, Rosa, it's sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, there's already one video, but it's for the live performance performances. Oh, okay. Enjoy. Oh, good. Well, thank you so much for showing us your costumes. Do you have any last things you want to share with us before we go? Any? Um, I would say I'm very honored to have had the opportunity from you, Barb, and from Race, but also all the viewers. Uh, thank you for the beautiful feedback. I can't wait to watch the uh, videos and read your comments. Uh, you can reach me at the website. Um, there's an emailing uh, section. Uh, but also, if that sparks a, an idea for you, just draw anything from out of anything you can make magic yourself. Um, and uh, if you're only a graphic artist, um, but you want to make things, you can combine those two. That's okay. true. That is so true. So yesterday, <laughs> and I was like, ta-da, I think this. No, it's <laughs> your years of... of uh, trying and trying some more and and being inspired by other people mm -hmm. inspire yourself with people that do the same things as you and people that do other things i love architecture for example mm -hmm. those guys influence me the nature is my biggest 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 you know um teacher yes yes Every nature i didn't invent anything mm -hmm. but i'm having fun with what nature has exactly oh that's so great well we appreciate so much you being with us and having the technical director in the house to kind of man the the iPad and and kind of help out with some of the glitches that we had going on today. It's just it's just just stuff that happens. But thank you so very 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 much to both of you. There they are, both. <laughs> there we got it. We got them both. Thank you so much for your platform. Thank you guys. It's an honor really appreciate it it was a treasure having you both here joining us today live from california so thank you guys and we'll see bye you bye. again bye. soon bye bye you guys okay so whoops hang on a second whoops wait a minute um there we go. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's more technical things than you can imagine going on. Um, so anyway, I think it's time for us to get the sponsors out and I call this a wrap, shall we? So let me get the sponsors. Get the sponsor cam. So if anybody has any last questions, pop them in the chat while I get the sponsors, okay? We'll see if Charlie can behave himself today. Are you coming? Are you? Come here. I see you. All right. Let's 
see if we can get you here where everybody can see your pretty face. Can they see your pretty face? There we go. Okay. Charlie, are you coming up too? Oh my. Well, we got to make more room than we have currently because Charlie is too fat. Charlie's too fat to have just a little bit of space. Ugh. There we go. Okay. Lie down so everybody can see both of you. There we go. Huh. It's a lot of work, cat wrangling. I'm telling you, it's a lot of work. Yes, it's a lot of work. Got to clean you up, make you presentable for the world. Don't we? Yes. <laughs> okay. Woo. So thank you so much for joining us today. It was really fun having you, um, having you guys be here with Rosa and Race and Charlie and Chance and Claus Man. And Charlie's now going to have a nap because he's tired. It was a lot of work getting up here to see you guys. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I don't know. The, the gentleman that was going to join me today had a family emergency. And so I don't know whether... I'm trying to get the cats here where you can see him. Charlie with his tongue sticking out. So I don't know whether he'll be joining me next week or if we're going to have to reschedule. So we're just going to have to wait and see. But he is a pen and ink artist. And so we'll see if that works out next week or someday in the future. So anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been great having you here. And um, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Until I see you next time, remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. And come over and check out howtogetcreative.com. And I will see you at the next um, live broadcast, which will be next Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So I'll see you then. So you guys have a great weekend. Thank you for being here. I have the best audience anywhere on the web. I know that. And I ap appreciate and treasure each and every one of you. So I'll see you next time. Bye, you guys. <laughs>